Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model in Synergy Plate. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So, let's get started. On the dashboard, you can set up your core inputs or drivers for the model, see the core financials and some core charts as an output of the model. First of all, let's start the setup from available rooms per day assumptions. You have three categories here, from Monday to Thursday, Friday and Saturday, and Sunday. So once you click at any yellow cell, you may see this notification window. This is an explanation of what you are supposed to input in here. I believe it will help you to understand and to navigate the model easily. So let's start the setup of available rooms per day. Example 100 in 2020 and plus 10 rooms each next year. So for Friday to Saturday and Sunday group it can be different amount or it can be the same. Let's pretend this is different. 105 and 10 rooms additionally each next year. And for Sundays the same. The next step is to set up your revenue per room or AGR, this is daily revenue. So again you have the same groups and you have ability to set up the AGR across the groups and across the years. Let's pretend it's $150 plus $5 each next year and let's imagine it's the same for all weekday groups. The next step is to, is to set up your other revenue which is events revenue and some bar and restaurant revenue. If you don't have, for example, events in your hotel, you can just clean these assumptions. If you have, you can adjust count of events per year. 200, 220, 240, 260, 280. And the average revenue per event. For example, 1000. And each next year plus $50 in average per event. Another two revenue streams, bar revenue and restaurant revenue. Just set up your total annual amount, 50,000 plus 5,000 each next year, like example. Another very important assumption, this is Cox percentage. Obviously, your four main revenue streams will have different margins, so you can set up the Cox percentage. For rooms, it can be 20%, for example, across all the years, for events it can be 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, or something like that. The next section which you can input on the dashboard, this is working capital assumptions. This is breakdown of your accounts receivable and accounts payable by four groups, from 0 to 30 days, from 31 to 60, from 61 to 90, and from 90 to 120. So this is a simple breakdown, 50% the first category, 20 for the second, 25 for third, and 100% minus previous three groups will give you 5%. If you input something wrong, like this, you have minus 35%, which is wrong, so you just need to, to keep the last category positive. So once you set up all the revenue, all the expenses, wages and assets, Assumptions, you may review your core financials and revenue breakdown by main revenue streams, profitability, chart, which include the EBDA revenue and EBDA percentage. The cash flow broken down by operating, investing, financing and net cash flow. And the cumulative cash flow also broken down by investing, financing, operating cash receipts and cash payments and the ending cash balance. On the seasonality tab you can input main seasonality assumptions. First of all, on the top you can input the room's occupancy seasonality. It is broken down by weekdays. The first category is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Second, Friday and Saturday. And third, Sunday. So you can input your occupancy seasonality across the months within the year. For example, 70, 75, 60, 65, etc. 
or if you don't need any seasonality you can just input 50% for example and copy this for Monday and Thursday group or you can copy this across all three groups. So you'll have static seasonality across all weekdays and across all months. The next step is to set up event seasonality, means the breakdown of total count of events across the year. For example, 15, 10, 5, 12, etc. So to the right you have the check. If it shows the red color means something is wrong, means that total is not 100%, now it is 107%. So you need to adjust something, for example, 18% of June. So now you have total 100% and check is green, means that everything is okay here. And the final section allow you to input the other revenue seasonality assumptions, which is broken down by bar revenue and restaurant revenue. The same idea, you can input assumptions across the year, and see the check. If you don't need any seasonality, you can just input 1 divided by 12 and copy this across all the months. So in this case, you'll have flat seasonality across the year. This works as well for event seasonality assumptions. On the income statement tab, you may see your main components of your profit and loss, which is total revenue, total cost of goods sold, gross margin, total variable expenses, total admin salaries and wages, total fixed expenses, EBITDA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, net profit before tax, your corporate tax, and as a result, net profit after tax. Please note that each category has its own subcategories, so you may click on this plus button and see the detailization, for example, for fixed expenses, or for variable expenses, or for example, for the revenue. On the cash flow statement, you may see your cash flow broken down by cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. The same information you may see on the cash flow statement in a direct method, operating, investing, and financing activities, but in more collapsed form. It's just easier to see the information here. And the balance sheet will show you the breakdown of your current assets, non current assets, current liabilities non-current liabilities and equity by its subcategories. The summary of three statements you may find on the financial statement summary tab. On the top you have income statement broken down by five years and the selected year which you can change here broken down by months. Below you may see the same information on the chart form. The next set of tables and charts will show you the balance sheet main KPIs broken down by 5 years and selected year by months. And the last part will show you the cash flow statement breakdown for the 5 years and 12 months for the selected year, as well as charts with the same information. On the top revenue tab, you can see the revenue breakdown by rooms revenue, events revenue, bar revenue and restaurant revenue. Also, you may see the breakdown of absolute values by years and percentage allocation by years. The same information you may see on the charts below. So here you may see the percentage allocation and the absolute values allocation. On the revenue depths and monthly run rate charts, you may see the detailed year, which you can change here. You can see the absolute values and percentage allocation of your revenue streams. On the revenue bridge, you may see the main drivers of your revenue growth between two years. Years are changeable also, so you can set up starting from 2021 to 2023. So on the left side of this chart, you may see 2021 revenue. On the right side, you may see 2023 revenue amount. And in between, you may see the main components of your revenue growth. On the financial charts tab, you may see two sets of charts, which is two years broken down by months and five years broken down by months with main financial KPIs. On the top, you may see the revenue breakdown by months for rooms revenue, events revenue, bar revenue and restaurant revenue. 
The next set of charts will show you the operating cash flow broken down by cash inflow, which is blue, and cash outflow in orange color. The next set of charts will show you the cash balance by months. The next will show you the EBGA as yellow line and the components which is revenue, COX and OPEX. And the final couple of charts will show you the EBIT amount broken down by months for 2 years and for the 5 years. On the operational chart step, you may see the productivity KPIs on two sets of charts. So from the left side you may see two years broken down by months, and from the right side you may see five years broken down by months. So on the top set of charts you may see the average revenue per day, which is a blue line, and as orange line you may see the average OPEX per day. On the bottom you may see the workforce productivity charts, so as a blue line you may see the revenue per one employee, and as an orange line, you may see the OPEX per one employee per month. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with the total below. And also to the right you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year. And you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge, you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable, so you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab, you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular particular use case, you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab, you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, which you may input here cost of loans you previously inputted in on the dashboard, calculation of resource share you may see here, there is also tax rate, and here you may find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model there is two valuation methods, which is EBGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods, based on this information we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow, NPV, and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. On the benchmark KPI step, you can compare industry KPIs versus model KPIs, means that calculated using the model assumptions. So we have gross margin percentage, profit margin percentage, revenue for per available room in dollars, occupancy rate percentage, and gross margin for available rooms in dollars. So on the yellow cells you can see the industry specific benchmarks and these cells are changeable. For example, you know that the gross margin for your country, for your type of hotels is 60%. So you may see it change it on the chart to the right. And to the right of these yellow cells, you may see the section with calculations, means that these values are calculated based on the model assumptions. The same information you may see on the charts, so gross margin, profit margin, revenue per available room, occupancy rate, and gross margin per available rooms in dollars. And all the charts, your values calculated in the model are blue, and industry benchmarks are orange.
the color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color you have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally, you have Contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to How To and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the wages tab, you can input your headcount by categories with higher and higher date, with annual salary, with ability to input different number of employees by years, with annual salary rise percentage, with monthly bonus and tax rate. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let it be CFO, which you are going to hire in March 20. You are not going to fire him, so the fire date will be December 24. So annual salary can be $50,000 and this will be one CFO over the time. So you may see one CFO, which is one headcount, starting from March till the end of the model, which is December 24. Also you can input 5% of salary growth rate. You may see the amounts by years connected to this annual salary and impacted by annual salary rise. Let's set up 10% monthly bonus and 5% of tax rate. So you may see below the calculation of salary broken down by months, monthly bonus which is 10% and 5% of monthly taxes related to the payroll. Another option would be admin Account, which will start in April, which will grow till the end of the model with annual salary of $30,000. Let it be in year number 1, 2, then 4, 6, 8, and 10 headcounts. Three percentage of annual salary grows, 5% of monthly bonus, and 5% of payroll tax rate. So in here you may see total staff numbers, which is 2 for the year number 1, 2020. Starting from year 2021, you have 4, then 6, 8, and 10 in the last year of the model. Again, calculation of salaries for this 2, in this case 4, that counts, calculation of bonuses, and calculation of monthly base taxes. You may see an income statement, total salaries and wages, and here you may see the total amount of bonuses, payroll taxes and wages for these headcounts. On the variable expenses tab, you can input your variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue. Let me show you how it works. For example, bank fees and your bank fees is 2.5 percentage of your revenue so in the same way as your revenue grows over time you may see that bank fees will grow as a percentage of this total revenue the same way you can input other variable expenses like for example five percent direct labor 
like 15% of total revenue. And below you may see the calculation of these variable expenses by months. So these expenses will be connected to the income statement tab, section variable expenses. And you may see these line items by months and break, broken down by expenses types. On the fixed expenses tab, you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, we have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. You may see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with the amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate, you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B-weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two B-weekly payments within the month, $500 multiplied by two, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup, which can be one time payment, which will happen in February 20, with the amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates because this is just one-time fee. And you may see that office setup will happen in February 20 with this amount. Another option, insurance. Let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model. And it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month with 5% of growth first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third, and 1% year number four. So you may see this calculation here. Starting from January 21, it will grow for 5%, which is $50. And starting from January 22, it will grow for 3%, which is additionally $32. Another option, quarterly. You may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually. In this case, you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again, with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments. You'll pay one time per 12 months starting from February till December 24. For each expense type, you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also, in income statement, you may find total fixed expenses group. If you will ungroup this section, you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. You may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of real examples. 
for example, this will be kitchen and other development expenses. You can input purchase date for each category, for example, February and March. You can input spending, $50,000, $10,000, for example. You can also use payment delay feature, which means that if you will sell it for the kitchen two months, you will pay in April for the kitchen and, for example, three months for other development expenses, which means that you will pay for it in June 20. The total amount of development expenses connected to the assets tab. Let me see it here. By default, the useful time for development capex is five years. So you may see the calculation of depreciation and closing netbook value. You are also able to input up to six other assets, for example, other capex with launch date, for example, June, with three years of useful time, with $5,000 cost. You may see the calculation here. So in this step, you have calculation of capital expenditure, book depreciation and closing netbook value. The total amounts you may see in income statement tab in depreciation section. For the cash flow, you can see the fixed assets capital expenditure. And in the balance sheet, you may see fixed assets, assets closing book value and capex prepayments in case of new prepayment. Repay these amounts and it will pay in some months after you will have capex payable because we set up two and three months payment delay you may see that we have capex payable I can also remove here or select zero months in this case capex payable will be zero but you will have just fixed assets amounts broken down by months Also on the top of the dashboard have debts assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt, you are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model, which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment, which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses, will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual. Your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input some amount of the debt, the launch date, term the 60 months and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant, which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it no repayments no terms in terms of interest so all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab calculations for the debt number one debt number two debt number three total debts with grants these calculations impacts income statement interest expenses the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments, and on the balance sheet, we have the debt closing balance. On the capitalization table, you can input different founders and investors contributions, broken down by different dates of funding, with different cost of share for each series, and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder 1, founder 2. So total amount of shares for founder 1 can be 10,000, for founder number 2, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder 1 is $20,000, for founder 2 is $40,000. In total they invest 
thousand dollars which you may see here the dilution is 34 33 to 67 percentage of shares so let's pretend that for series a we have one investor and the date of issuance is may cost per share is five dollars per share and number of shares is one thousand so total amount of investment will be five thousand dollars you may see that before the series a total equity was sixteen thousand dollars after sixty five thousand dollars and investor one will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of founder one and founder two also diluted 32.26 and 46.52 percentage you can also input some amounts for series b and series c the same way you can set up the date cost of share and up to five investors is up to five placeholders for number of shares the amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow in the ordinary equity risings and you may see the balance sheet which shows you the total equity by months on the top of the dashboard you have currency denomination and taxes setup so currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. You have currency outputs. It can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs. So let me give an example. When you input in United States dollars, you have euro as an output. And for this case, you can set up currency exchange rate this is 1.2 for example in this case you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars all your outputs in euros and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs additionally you have denomination which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports in this example